Hey there! What's up? Darren Harler with Wee TJ. We're going to assemble the rear K sail. Put bearings on. Okay. So, totally cleaned. Made sure to clean off the flange with Scotch Bright. Hosed it off. He hosed it off. What? One, two, three, four, five times. I kept sending them out over and over and over again. So, should be clean. Is this some dirt I see? Mm -hmm. Can you wash it again? So, I think he's fed up with me. I want it clean. I want the dog to quit barking. Hold on. So, here's the, the area right here. Now, mind you, don't, don't ever put bearings in dry. Uh, just take some, whatever you're assembling. We're actually using the actual lubricant. Just put a real light film around here, coat in there. Um, you'll, you'll go all that aluminum quick and it just, it'll fight you uh, the the wording has to go up there's a rounded face to this that needs to go down okay now I want to show you the proper driver cedar what have you is part number 9643 but just like what I told you before I'm actually gonna give you the measurements of this thing So you got two inches real, oh, come on, two inches, 414 thousandths. Okay, um, that measurement doesn't matter, but this will matter. You technically probably don't need this measurement here. You can probably do it with a flat driver. It measures one inch, 362 thousandths. Right there, just like that. Now how they have the end doing it is this goes in like so so this may be one of the the small drivers that it'd be worth worth it to um to purchase but we're gonna get this in right now that fly is annoying me alrighty This extension that I bought, this is meant to pop into the center, just like that, but you wouldn't need that. Um, you probably could just use a standard. For this right here, I think you could use a just a, um, a race driver turned backwards and just a pipe. I bought it, but I think you could skip this portion on this just with a race driver. You know what I'm talking about? Let me grab it. Um, this is a seal race driver. It, typically they come in a set. You should, if, if you're doing this here, I'm assuming you already own one of these. So you just turn it backwards. It's easy enough to drive that right there. Push that in. It looks like it just pushes it flush. So um, I think you could substitute that. Wow. That thing comes out hard. Okay, starting to touch. Now look at this. This thing is giving me zero. Now just like everything that I press, I always go down a little ways. I let it back up. Yep. The reason is I want I want this to reposition. That way if I'm binding anything or anything of that sort. This is going in easy. There we go. I think I think we're there. Yeah, we're flush. All right. So the next thing is this bearing down in here. Now we installed this bearing right here. Uh, focus there, you little leprechaun. I just installed that right there. And yeah, I didn't forgot to video it. But either way, this is the bearing that went in right there. 
Now through all the parts that they sent me, they did not send me one that fit this. So uh, there it is. Um, I guess if you had anything larger, this would be about ideal. But since the race, the outer part of the bearing sticks proud of the housing, I just grabbed my brass punch and since this one goes in so easy you can see how small a ball peen hammer it is I just worked around it stay off the seal you should be good all right so we got these little wings and from everything I I've I can tell they're all the same Looks like they're all the same. Put a little blue Loctite on these. It's a T30 Torx. It does say that it goes, hold on here. Um, 7.3 foot pounds to 10 newts. Guys, seven, I, I want it's 10 newts or 7.3 foot pounds. Um, I, I would recommend you use a torque wrench. I, I would recommend you use a torque wrench because these things actually are i'm done um are tighter than what you would think they would and but i don't want to tell you how tight they are so you either can err on the side of um your build-in torque wrench or <laughs> i mean it does have loctite but uh, that it would concern me a little bit so all right we are moving on to the reverse gear we are okay so a couple things I wanted to point out concerning this reverse idler is the gear gear right there um, has that cut okay so the cut goes up and of course the writing on this right here goes up and one thing I noticed this half moon or this yeah half moon is chamfered on the back side so I was I've been trying to figure out which way this went and then I, I just figured it out. They're only going to put a chamfer for going down. Uh, Loctite the bolt that goes in and it says 15 foot pounds. We are done with this then. They have these little knobs or whatever, and this driver right here is made just for it. Y'all ready for this? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Even though I wanted to beat on it. Sometimes after you pay so much for a tool, you just want to keep using it because you're like, well, I paid that much for it. Shouldn't we? Have? See the polar. We got the full experience with that polar. We beat the crap out of that thing. I'm back. I just thought I wanted to be consistent. True to my word. In the event that you did want to make one of these, uh, the outside diameter is two inches six, uh, six seven hundred thousandths. So six hundred. I'm sorry, two inches and six hundred seventy thousandths. Um, that groove in there. Let me give you both measurements. 
so the OD of that groove is 1.983 uh, I'll, I'll give them to you that way and then the ID of that groove is 1.713 there you go now we're done